Hi folks, um, so we're looking at the Vauxhall Zephira, this is the 1.6 CDTI 2011 edition, um, but it is relevant to pretty much any diesel car, and when I say a modern diesel car, since 2009, because this is to do with DPF, which is diesel particulate filters. Now these were mandatory in 2009, for the UK and um, basically it's a filter that helps stop soot and other things coming out of the exhaust on diesel cars. So they were made mandatory in 2009 and what that means is that if you have a diesel after that year there's a good chance you have a DPF fitted. So if you have a diesel particulate filter fitted every 300 to 600 miles, and this does vary depending on manufacturer, etc., it will go through a regeneration cycle. Now, what this means is that the DPF gets heated up to a very high temperature, which effectively burns off all of the chemicals and soot and things like that that have gathered in your DPF, and this cleans it out or at least that's the theory. Now a lot of people find that this doesn't always complete or there's problems, but when it is happening as well, you will get much poorer fuel consumption. Uh, and especially on these, the Vauxhall Zephyras, you get what smells like burnt rubber. And uh, it's the DPF going through a regeneration cycle. Another thing is, if you don't know it's happening, it can be a bit disconcerting. So how do you tell? that your DPF is going through a regeneration cycle. Well, that's the problem. It doesn't tell you, it doesn't indicate. Sometimes you know it's from poorer mileage, but other than that, you don't know. However, on the Vauxhall Zephyras, that's Opal as well, there is a trick that you can use to, uh, to find it out. And uh, we're gonna take a look at doing that just for you now. So one of the ways that you can tell is if you switch your info center, across to instant consumption with the car running what you'll do is you'll be able to tell what your normal consumption is like but when it's doing a regen you will get a much higher consumption just whilst the car's sat idling so that's one way you can tell the dpf is going through a forced regen cycle again that will give off the burnt tire smell if you get out of the car. Most noticeable from the passenger side. So your passengers and your left hand side of the car may notice it more. That's because that's where the DPF is based. It goes along the exhaust line and you can smell it the most along that side. So that's one way of checking. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at an alternative. Now, basically, whenever the rear heater is turned on, so this is normally the one that you control and you can switch on heated mirrors, windows that kind of thing well what the car does is when it goes through a forced regen it will turn that on itself the reason being it loads the engine up so that it gets the engine and the exhaust very hot indeed now when it gets very hot the idea is that it burns the particulates and everything that's been caught in the diesel particulate filter and cleans it out so that's what's meant by a dpf regen it gets rid of the particles and the rubbish that's caught up in it by burning it off effectively so when the car does that it works really hard it dumps diesel so it uses more diesel to get the engine running hotter and it in turn gets the DPF hot and burns that off so like I say what it does is it makes the engine work harder and one of the ways it does that on the Zephira B and C is it turns on the demisters because that puts load on the engine to work so what it does is the heated mirrors come on and the heated rear windscreen now so one option that you'll probably have seen in some of the forums is that you can put an indicator, a little LED that shows you when those are turned on. And all you need to do is compare when your indicator turns on as to when you've got that turned on. So you know when you've turned it on and off. And if it's on at another time, then that is a good indicator. It's your DPF going through a regen. So the first option is on your side mirror that's heated, 
what you can do is you can attach an, an LED to it. So when it is getting power to it, it's getting heated, then it'll tell you. Now on the Zafira B that I have, the only way to do that, you can see it's all sealed along here. So to get at where the electrics are, unfortunately, this panel here doesn't get you enough access. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to take off the entire door card to do that. And that's quite a bit of work because as you can see, there's a separate section along the bottom. So you would re remove this, then you can take the door card out. Now it's quite a nice solution this because what you can do is you can hide the LED behind this speaker grill. So it just shines through the grill. That is quite a nice solution to this because it's quite unobtrusive. But like I say, unfortunately, with it being like this door card, it's not the option I'm going to go for on my Zafira B. Just as part of that, I have been told on Zafira C there is a separate panel here. I'm going to try and take get a photo of that to show you. If that's the case, because I believe there's a speaker up here on the Zafira C, you can go in through that point and add it quite easily there so that may be an option so if you've got a Zafira C bear that in mind also let me know put a comment down below and tell me that you've done that or that's the solution you can go for so the second option is here we are at the boot of the car and what we can do is we can look at using the rear heater as the indicator now as you can see this is all plastic trim that goes around here and you'll see rather conveniently there's a rather nice central trim. Now you can see my reverse and backup camera. I'll cover that in another video. So what we want to do is we want to get access to the power connector that powers this. So what we'll do is we'll take the center piece out, this plastic panel, and we'll take a look and see how easy it is to get at, to connect in. So to take this panel off, it's just a couple of push clips that hold it in place. So you get your fingers in behind, you can see, stretches out quite nicely and just gently pull and you can hear that's one of the push clips in the middle so we'll pull the other push clip in the middle out like this now the edges pull apart like this so lift it out and it's slowly down over you saw that movement I'll do the other side pull the clip slightly out and down over and you see this panel comes off completely and it gets us access to the wiring so you'll see that I've already done a little bit of extra wiring on here so I'll explain what I've done now so here you can see the existing wiring loom and this is the bit that shows us how it all connects together because if we follow this wire here you'll see that it goes into this panel and that's exactly what we're after because along the side of here there will be a connector at some point that provides the power to these now the part of this that you need to bear in mind is that there'll be one on one one on this side and one on this side because it provides power right across that's how they work so we'll have a connector at either side so what we can do is we can run one wire right the way across and on the other side we can run our LED. Now I'm going to do this so the LED is on the passenger side of my car. So from this side all we need is a single wire to where the connector is. So what we'll do is pull this panel down slightly. We don't need to take this one off and you'll be able to see the connector. Okay what I've done is I've pulled this panel down and you can see the connector just inside. And you'll see that what I've done is I've wrapped a wire around the metal terminal and I've added some electrician's tape to hold it in place. So that's all you need, single wire. It's not gonna carry much current, so it doesn't have to be a big heavy gauge wire. This is actually speaker wire, which has got enough current to provide to the LED. That's all it's gonna be doing. So you're quite safe using something like that. So you see, all you do is wrap the wire around the connector so it has an electrical connection. It has to be touching the metal to make an electrical connection, not just the plastic outer or any of this. It needs to make contact with this metal component here. And then all I've done is I've ran this red wire all the way along, right across here to the other side, 
and into this side which is where I've run my LED. So here we are on the left hand side, exactly the same thing. Take that trim away and you can see the connector there. And again, what I've done is I've wrapped a wire around the inside of the connector. So I've taken the connector off, ran the wire through it and then pushed the connector back on. Bit of electrician's tape and that just holds it all together. And there's the other wire. Now, the next important thing is to work out which one is positive and which one is negative and you do that using a multimeter. Now if you haven't used a multimeter before, don't worry, if you have one, have a look and what we're looking for is first of all DC because we need this set to DC and then we need to set it higher than the voltage that we will be measuring. So in this case a car will tend to be 12 to 14 volts. 14 is when it's charging, 12 or 11 are when the battery's idle. So what we do is, in this case, I would switch it to the 40 setting. And you can see we're reading zero at the moment. Now what we need to do is turn the rear heater on so that there's power being supplied to it. Note that you'll need to have the engine running to do this. So start that, the car up turn the rear heater on and then what we can do is we can test from the two wires that we've just wired in which one is plus positive and which one is minus negative now remember when you're doing this do not allow the wires to touch that will cause a short circuit and will blow a fuse on the car so just remember do not allow the wires to touch together so what we'll do is we'll connect it up and we'll see which one is positive and which one is negative so here we are with the meter and what I'm going to do is very simply touch one probe on this side on the connector, reach across and touch the other probe on the other side and we should get a reading on the meter. Now as you can imagine this is quite difficult to do whilst I'm filming and juggling everything at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the output once I've done that. So here we go, this is with it connected, engine on and the rear heater on. So I'm touching the metal probes on either side of the car, of the rear heated windscreen. And you can see the voltage has gone up, but you see we have a minus symbol showing. That means that the probes are the wrong way around. Now your probes will be black and red. You can see the connector that I'm using here, black and red. So that means that the current black is on positive and the red is on minus so swap them round you'll lose the minus symbol and you'll know which way round to wire your LED perfect you can see I've now got the probe the other way round and we're showing 12 volts on the red and the black so we now know which one is our plus which one is our minus now just a quick aside here you could actually have skipped all of this most LEDs will only most LEDs are quite happy with getting a brief reverse voltage. So what that means is you could skip all of this and just try connecting your LED up. If it lights, you've got it the right way around. If it doesn't, swap it round and it'll light up. So generally, you can do that. However, if you want to do the proper job, use a multimeter like I've shown you. The next part of this is your LED. Now in this case you see I've chosen a red LED and you see that I've attached a resistor to it. Now it depends on your electronics skill level on this as to whether you want to do it this way. If you go on eBay and just search 12 volt LED you'll find people sell them pre done with the resistor already attached or sometimes it's attached onto a small wire with the resistor soldered onto it so it's completely up to you which way around you want to do this but basically all you need is an LED that you can power from 12 volt supply so this is how I've wired it up in this case now remember LEDs care about voltage they need plus on the plus minus on the minus they won't light if you get it the wrong way around, as I mentioned earlier. So make sure once you've got it ready to go, cover up the uh, the terminal. So I'm going to put some heat shrink 
over each of the legs on here to insulate them to make sure that they can't make contact with any of the rest of the car. Remember, this is important. Everything that you do, you need to have insulated either using electrician's tape or heat shrink tubing. That makes sure that you're not going to cause any shorts to your car electrics. Because remember, this takes quite a lot of vibration being in the boot, so better be safe. So here it is, here's my LED prepared, you can see the heat shrink, I've also just added a bit of ele extra electrician's tape, you can see there is no exposed metal at all, and I've used colour coded wires as well that follow it through, and what I've done is if you trace that up, that wire, go one side goes up to this side, so on mine, the left is negative. The left hand side of my car is negative. Now whether that matches yours or not, I don't know. So again, check. So that's that wire there. And then over on the other side, there's the red wire. And there's my LED. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the LED so it pokes out just a little bit on the passenger side behind the trim. So it's time to put the trim back on, fasten the LED in, and that should solve it. Now there's a little trick to putting these back on that I thought I'd show you. What you want to do is lift this one up slightly, if that happens don't worry about it, and you need to get the bottom of this panel in before you push it into the top. So hook it under first, like this, and then lift it up like so, and it will click into place. It takes a couple of goes to get it right, but once you've got it, there we go, it's gone in and just push the rest into place and it holds it all together. There it is, there's the finished product. Small LED just poking out so that you can see it just in your rear view mirror. Now obviously you want it fairly subtle so I've got it just hiding so you can just about make it out. It doesn't have to be anything big and powerful and brash. It's just a little indicator that you can tell when your DPF is going through a regen. Now I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to make this out but where you're looking is just up at the top here and if I turn on the rear vistas you might just be able to make out a very slight little red LED indicator that's showing and that's all we're after, we're just after a little indicator that shows us exactly when it's doing a, a regen and there we go that should do exactly what you need. So I hope this has been useful for you on diesel particulate filters, a little bit of background and also how to tell when your Vauxhall Zafira is going through a DPF regen. Uh, do please add a comment below if this has been of use to you. If you have any problems fitting it, please do put a comment and of course like and please subscribe to my channel that's very important because the number of subscribers is important to youtube these days so please do subscribe it helps me keep my channel running and it helps me do more videos so please subscribe below and i'll see you next time for another car video